and it is another great day to be alive and I joyfully welcome you to Christian Connect on ETV Ghana, your world of quality entertainment and I believe your Sunday is going well. Thanks be to God who always carry our burdens day by day. Just be assured that each day God carries your burden. So just leave everything to him and surely he will carry your burden and you will be free. Let me give thanks to Osasio Fashion for providing my outfit. Osasio Fashion is on Facebook and uh, is also on Instagram as well. You need to check some of the beautiful designs. Uh, Christmas is just around the corner. Who knows, she will be able to sew something beautiful for you and you can give them a call on 0243 This Christmas, Osasio Fashion says, style your occasion. And last week, if you were able to watch us, we discussed the issue of spiritual fathers, understanding the role of spiritual fathers. And we had a lot of things to say, and yet still there were a lot more left. We couldn't finish it. So today on Christian Connect, we'll be looking at the role of spiritual fathers again and all the other issues that ought to come up and the way forward. Stay with us and we'll be back to continue with the conversation. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. And we are doing a second part of understanding the role of spiritual fathers. And if you were able to watch us last week, as we discussed, um, <laughs> there were a lot of uh, uh, debates and uh, controversy, not so much though, always agreeing on the same thing, but some differences. And I have those same wonderful, great people with me again um, to look at the issue uh, once more. And I have uh, Apostle uh, Curtis uh, Amate Few, yes, Amate Few of uh, Riches of Glory Ministry. Um, Apostle, welcome again. Thank you, Paul. Yes, and then uh, Brother Mark J.B. Nyante, and he is an elder with the Brethren at uh, Nyantre Nyansi. Yes, mm. in the Ashanti region, right? Yes, Kumasi. Uh, which district is that? Is, Kwadasu is it? district. Kwadasu district. Yes. That's wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Welcome to the Thank capital, you, Accra. Paul. Thank you. <laughs> 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 and uh, um, uh, as for uh, Apostle Ahmed Amate, if you is a, is a, a big man here in Accra. It's like a manche. <laughs> 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 right, so um, last week we discussed the, the role of spiritual fathers. Uh, I don't know whether, Apostle, you, if you can summarize it for us, whom we, say, whom we said a uh, spiritual father was, and uh, um, yes, if you can just give a short summary of what we did last week. Uh, last week we discussed about um, who is a spiritual father, the role of a spiritual father and then and understanding of the spiritual father and the relationship between the spiritual father and the sons. Mm. And in our discussion, we realize that today we are discussing this because there's a lot of division and trouble in the church because mm. the upbringing of spiritual sons and relationship with fathers mm. has brought more havoc to the church than we have expected. Mm. Because children have not been allowed, they have not allowed themselves to be trained Fathers are also impatient to train them, mm. and then eventually everything is split up. Everybody is going his own way, doing mm. whatever they like. And so today I think we can center something different, how we can remedy the situation mm. and bring clarity to the spirit. So those who are hearing us will know that there's still hope that there, will be, there should be a father and a son in ministry. Mm. Uh, Brother Mark. Hello. Apostle says there should be hope. Uh, do we have hope? Are, are there going to be any corrections? Do we have hope? Yes, we have hope. Mm. In fact, when you read Revelation, mm. the Bible makes us see that the bride and the spirit said to Christ, come. That means that exactly what God wanted for bringing up the church, mm. he had his own results. Mm. So there's hope. Mm. We don't know how it's going to come by, mm. but then there is hope. The mm. end of the matter is that God had the church, sorry, his bride for his Christ. Mm. And that is the assurance of the hope. 
Mm -hmm. Th that's very interesting. So now we look at um, the various divisions. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that there are a lot of quarrels, divisions uh, between spiritual fathers and their sons? Can I take that first? Yes, do that. Good. In actual fact, um, talking with Apostle, we've come to the point where we want to focus on the solution now. Mm. Call it what you may, spiritual father, mm. mentor, mm. whatever. But there is a correction in the Bible, and that is what we want to focus on. Mm. And that is where I want to start from. Right. Jesus, in calling the twelve and leaving the twelve, mandated them with a work. Mm. And he told them what to do specifically. Mm. Go, preach, baptize those who believe, and teach them. Now we go, preach, baptize, even in some way, and we fail to teach them. We teach them our pet doctrines. That is where we have gone wrong. So if we go back to the basis, where the basis is taking scripture as our standard, Paul said something interesting. That which I receive is what I give unto you. Mm. So if we have also come from the, tr uh, the, the work of Paul and those who went ahead of us, and they have scribbled everything in the Bible for us, God allowing his own spirit to bring it into one volume like we have today, we should also go by what we have received. But unfortunately, we go some point and we leave the holy writ and do what our own thinking tells us. So the solution is going back to the basis. Mm. And to start from going back to the basis, the church is what Jesus planted. And the church has rules and regulations for everybody. Mm. And in the church, he says, let's go and ordain elders. Paul speaking in Acts chapter eight, uh, 14, verse 24, I think. He says, let's go and ordain elders in every locality, every church that we have previously gone to. And that is what they did. You come to Titus and he says that this is why I left you in Crete, to ordain elders in every locality. But we have taken the elders to be the pastors. And the pastors, whether deliberately or whatever, have also assumed the leadership role over everybody. But in the church, God gives us the fivefold ministry gifts. Past, uh, 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 apostles first, prophets second, evangelists third, um, pastors, yeah. and then teachers. It does not mean we should go one, two, three, four, five. But in Corinthians, again, when he was talking about these giftings, he started with the, uh, the apostle. He says first the apostle, second prophet, teachers, and then the rest follow. In other words, there is an order in the church. Once we go by the order, we will get the results. Like the computer is what we input that will come out. Mm. But unfortunately for us, we have done it our own ways. That is why we have all these divisions and confusions and we are not getting the right results. So, so you, you talked about um, uh, Jesus sending out the 12. Exactly. Will you say that before he sent them out, Jesus had served as their spiritual father yeah. before sure. sending yeah. them out? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The reason I debated a bit about that understanding is the wrongness mm. of things that we see today. Mm. Because Jesus, as a spiritual father, never went wrong. Mm. And then the, uh, 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 Moses and Joshua, there was no hitch. In fact, some people even think that it was Moses who selected Joshua. No, the Bible says God told Moses to select Joshua. But w will you describe the dis relationship between Joshua and um, uh, Moses as a spiritual father and a son? I would describe it as obedience to the Lord. Mm. And that is what we are lacking. You see, it is in there. It is in there. Like my, my brother beautifully uh, espoused father, the physical father, son relationship. Mm. Everything is in there. Once you get it wrong, the child either becomes uh, 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 abusive or mm. deviant or whatever. But once you get it right, everything is cooked out from there. Uh, Apostle, uh, you see, um, Brother Mark talked about getting things right and all those things. And we, I just mentioned about Jesus 
being a, a spiritual father to the apostles. And yet, who betrayed him? Thomas? Mm. Yes, Thomas betrayed him. So this it's, kind it's, of... is is Judas. Jud uh, Judas, I said mm. Thomas. Yes, Judas <laughs> rather betrayed him. Mm. Um, so this kind of divisions, quarrels, is it not normal? Well, Paul, like my brother said earlier on, let's start with hope. I believe that the structure or the system that Jesus used is still there for us to study. Jesus spent only three and a half years and was able to raise mighty men who took over the ministry. And most of them excelled. What Jesus did was to build relationship mm -hmm. with them. And the problem we have today is the lack of relationship. You understand me? When I talk about relationship, I'm not talking about relationship where you just does anything anyhow, conscious relationship where you have in mind as a as as a as a father what your intentions and what you you are looking for. And that should motivate you to believe, to build a relationship with your son. When the when the son sees that relationship, it will be difficult for that son to do anything or, or to, I mean otherwise. What I've seen today is that we lack relationship with our sons. The kind of relationship the sons are expecting from the fathers. Mm. And the fathers giving the children. Now imagine you are in a church like this, my son. I don't even know much about him. I, I come to church and I want to see him perform. He has a, an issue he can't even discuss with me. He has a problem, he can't even talk to anybody in the church. He has a need I don't even know. He start going around doing stuff. What we want to do, ask churches and leaders to do now, that when we see potentials and God giftings within the church, we should build relationship, relationship that will mature into some fruitfulness. Paul, imagine you have a good relationship with your child and he grows up. He can't even abuse. He can't even do. I mean, I mean, otherwise, he knows how you raise him up. He relates with you, with you, uh, based on the relationship you taught him when he was young. You understand me? The yes. confusion is coming because along, the relationship got broken along the line, and so the expectations of the servant of the son can, I mean, is always determine what he does, and the father too has an expectation which he also influences what he does. Mm -hmm. Now, our relationship with Jesus, if you look at Jesus, he was with them twenty-four-seven. He sleeps with them, he eats with them, he knows them. He, when they do something wrong, he calls them into the office and, and advise them and correct them, mm. equip them, pray with them. You understand me? Yeah, I, I, I do. I sign them and mm. then get re feedback, get a report, and mm. then improve on what they are, where they are. Well, uh, Apostle, so I, I will we'll go for a break very soon. But my question is the relationship. Uh, some of the spiritual fathers, they have... I mean, uncountable. They don't even, <laughs> I don't know, but they have lots and lots of people they call spiritual signs. So how do you then yeah. have time for all of these people? How do you so determine you that my, my children are becoming many, so I'm stopped giving birth? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Paul. Physically, you can. You Physically, you can. But spiritually, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. <laughs> let me but, uh, oh, okay, let me, let me, okay. let me. Let me read 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. In fact, verse 1 talks about this same issue. Thou therefore, my son, mm. Paul speaking here, mm. be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Mm. Then the verse 2 is where I'm going to. And the things that you have heard of me yeah. among many witnesses, uh -huh. the same commit thou to faithful men yeah. who shall be able to teach others also. The problem, once again, is that, you see, the pastors have taken too much upon themselves. Like the question you asked, how yeah. can you ment uh, uh, become Mentor a father effectively. To effectively to all, to all these, these people? all these sons that you have. But God has supplied the answer. Don't do it alone. Pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, apostles, all in one denomination wow. or church, one you group, see? brethren. <laughs> <laughs> so that, like the Bible says, the eye cannot say, I don't need the hand. Mm. The eye is seeing, the hand is supplying something, the nose is smelling, body of Christ. 
different parts doing this, uh, different things for the benefit of the body. Wow. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana, and we are doing part two of understanding the role of spiritual fathers, and it's becoming very, very interesting. Let's take our Bible quiz, and we'll be back to continue with the conversation. also watching Christian Connect on ETV Ghana and we are doing part two of understanding the role of spiritual fathers and my guests are Apostle um, uh, Apostle Curtis Amate Amate Few sorry <laughs> Amate Few of uh, Riches of Glory Ministries and then uh, brother Mark uh, JB Nyante uh, he's an elder with the brethren at uh, Nyantre Nyasi Kwada uh, District in the Ashanti region, Kumasi. <laughs> so, um, Mark, before we went for the break, um, yes. you were talking, uh, we were talking about how um, to stop maybe if a lot of spiritual fathers, uh, you have a lot of spiritual sons, mm. and then uh, how do you ensure that um, you, you can't stop it because a lot of them are coming, and you're saying that you are not supposed to do it alone. How do you think the divisions should be so, for example, I formed my ministry. Mm -hmm. The ministry is growing. I'm the big man in the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one everybody wants to have as a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. So how do you say that um, you, I, I, um, you, he's not supposed to do that alone? In the first place, starting your own ministry, unfortunately, is another problem. But we are not f discussing that today. Let's look at Moses. Moses, at the helm of affairs, of all Israel, over 6 uh, million yeah. people. And it took Jethro to advise Moses that don't do it the way you are doing it. You will kill yourself. Delegate some of your power. Thousand, hundreds, tens, and Moses did just that. And he was relieved of all the trouble. Mm. You come to the New Testament and God says he has given some to be this, that, that. There's a, a, a different way for the apostle, different way for the evangelist, different way for the prophet, and so on. So if one man takes it upon himself, whether he's a pastor, the most renowned pastor, or the most renowned apostle, he can't do it alone. So God says division of labor here in my business, in my church. So when we do that effectively, we can cater for the rest. And the focus is to bring this also into a level of maturity so that as they come up they also take some of the responsibility mm -hmm. but is it in every church that you are going to find apostles prophets teachers evangelists that is uh, what we left for us that. but unfortunately we have not worked along that line go everywhere like you just cited you are the main boss there who may do the main man which is not according to scripture you see we find um, um, the church and the elder is the eldest. Ordained elders in every church. In fact, in Acts chapter 20, from verse 17, Paul says that he called all the elders from uh, Ephesus. There was only one church in Ephesus, and he called all of them to address them. We have moved away from this pattern. And so it's become easy for me. Once I know uh, up to A, B, C, D, E, F, then I also go and start my own church, uncooked, and I start doing something. And because maybe a miracle or some performance has come for me, people gather around and I become their special father. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the basis. Then we'll be able to make headway. Uh, Apostle, maybe I would have to ask you the same question again, mm -hmm. because you have um, a church and you have branches, mm -hmm. and you have set up a school, you, are, you have a big uh, I mean, you have a lot of people. Mm. So how do you regulate? How do you ensure that the people who want you as their spiritual father, you're able to regulate it in such a way that you're able to attend to everybody? Well, Paul, like I said, let's narrow the spiritual father between those, the sons to those who are called to ministry. Mm. If okay. we, yeah, let's narrow it because we can't use the whole, the whole congregation as you're raising all of them to become, let's narrow 
those who we want to raise as those who are called into ministry. And then we can then talk around that line. Right. Now, what I have seen so far is that the burden of a father is what many men of God have not understood. The burden of a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. Now, you can you like he said on God had to spend Moses. If you look at Exodus chapter two verse eleven, the Bible says, "And Moses thought he has grown, and he went out." Moses thought that he has grown, he went out, and then find a problem. And God took him back into the wilderness for 40 years okay. and trained him and brought him back to the same thing that he wanted to do at, at that age. Mm. You see how God trained Moses? Yes. 40 solid years to use him for one major assignment. If you call yourself a spiritual father and you have spiritual sons, you first of all, you must know the calling of the person you want to train mm. and how you can put yourself into that person in terms of training. Because sometimes we have a whole lot of people in church who don't know how God has, we know them as being called by God, but we have, no, we have no idea of where God is taking them to. And we want to train them the same way. And then that's where the problem starts from. Because you, your attention to all of them is like the same. Your commitment to them is, not this, is, the, is almost the same. You have people who have been called for something bigger than even your, what you are doing. Different. Different. And they need a special attention and training. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have a problem with. And I'm encouraging all pastors that as long as you have children in the ministry, don't categorize them and put them in one box. Mm -hmm. Everybody and his calling. Right. And you must understand how God has called everybody differently Amen. and train them alongside where God has called them. Amen. If God spent 40 years in raising one person, how long are you going to spend raising one person who God has called like Moses? You understand? Yeah. Also, the children must understand that the fathers meet, meant well for them. Sometimes they are in a hurry. Sometimes they want it fast and quick. You know, these days you can't even ask any of your children to do some of the things you were doing those days. They will tell you, no, I won't do it. Because they have seen no need of it right now. But in ministry, they will find that it is still there. What I'm trying to say is that w the fathers must understand that God who chose men in your ministry is God who brought them to your ministry. You are there to represent God in the ministry. And so God will give you the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding for each person that you are uh, trying to equip. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you understand the ministry and the calling that they have. Amen. And that will help us a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, I have children, sons who come to me. And you can see from the beginning, they may not even look at what you are looking at now. Mm. Some of them, I will just start prayer meeting. Well, let's go and pray. And in the midst of prayer, their eyes start seeing, their ears start opening. Okay. And they come to tell you things. Oh, I saw this, I saw that. And sometimes what they see, even the interpretation of what they have seen, you need to tell them what this means and what this meant. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, they start learning from you. So, but then for them to allow you to have more time training them, once they start seeing things and they can hear things from God, they started moving away from you. So the training is incomplete. They have baked. They have no time for the fathers to equip them well. They just on their way out. To work <laughs> but, to but, but, but Apostle, I mean, if, if I've come under you for training and now God can speak to me directly <laughs> without telling you, why should I still uh, be under you? You see the problem. The problem is it's not about hearing and seeing. Mm. Ministry is more than hearing and seeing. Yes. You know, the gift things make you run faster. Somewhat. Or the, the gift things can lift you higher. Mm. Okay. But character have to sustain you. Exactly. You may have the gift, but you have no character. Mm. You may have the gift and you are a liar and you are a cheat and you do all stubborn things around. Like and you happening. still you are still have the gift. You see, you understand? The gift yes. is just a gift. Mm. But you need to be equipped in such a way that the character will go along with the gift. Amen. Hey, hey, Brother Mark, you wanted to talk about the Samuel <laughs> yes. and the Eli issue. Samuel had. Mm. He did not move away. Yes. He still studied under Samuel. Uh, Eli. Elijah. Eli. 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 Eli, yeah. Eli, thank yeah. you for the correction. 
So that was just to chip in to help the conversation. You see. Mm. So that's the, what I'm saying that w there's a role the, past, the lead the fathers must mm. take upon themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's a role the sons too must understand. But, you know, also we, we know we are limiting um, it to those who are being called to ministry and all that. Okay. But, you know, Paul also calls the churches that he set up, the people, as um, his sons, mm -hmm. didn't he? He did. Uh, Mark. In yes. Corinth. So, so, so he calls all of them um, his children. His children. Yes. What I'm trying to say is that Paul. Yes. If you are in a church, everybody automatically becomes either a member or a son or a daughter to you. Yes. Right. Okay. Each of them need to grow up to fulfillment of what God has called them to be. Some okay. will be accountants. Some will be lawyers. Some will be this. The issue is that as you continue to pray for them and advising and equipping them. Those who are ready to submit to you for further training will be showing, I mean, you as graduate begin to say, that others who may think, oh, I've gotten enough, mm -hmm. so I'm going out. I don't even need more covering or, or training mm -hmm. anymore. I can be on my own. And then they, they move on. There are others who think, oh, look, with the vision I have, I ne still need more training, so I'm going to submit more. The rule is that you, the spiritual father, must understand that these are God's children that are in your house. Mm -hmm. They are there for a time and a season. Sometimes God is not bringing them to stay with you permanently. Mm -hmm. The problem we also have is that the fathers don't know the time to release the sons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some sons are ready to go and the fathers don't want to release them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they have to find a way to, to go out, to move. Mm. To move. <laughs> and, and, and some of you are linked, uh, sometimes you, you curse. I mean, oh, you, oh you no, 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 no. We <laughs> this don't is Christian Connect on ETV <laughs> Ghana, your world of quality <laughs> entertainment. And we are looking at understanding the role of spiritual fathers, uh, part two. Let's now take the latest in news and we'll be back. Renowned gospel musician Cecilia Marfo has expressed shock at the level of hype and patronage she has received on social media following her popular Washawase video. About a week ago, the 43-year-old evangelist revived her prominence on the music market after butchering the lyrics of a popular Christian chorus, What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Cecilia's thwarted rendition of the song subsequently made her a subject of laughter and public ridicule across all the known social media platforms. On TikTok, for example, scores of users created viral videos to mimic on her funny slips on the English lyrics. By reacting to the fame that has accompanied the song, the charismatic singer said she never anticipated that her video would generate such a huge traction. The Prince of Wales is flying five or six dozen bottles of holy water taken from the River Jordan back to the UK for royal baptisms, which could include that of Lilibet, the granddaughter he has never met. The heir to the throne, 73, and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, 74, were afforded the honor of dipping their fingers in the water where Jesus was baptized as they embarked on a whirlwind visit of the Middle East. Now, it can be revealed that Charles will be taken home with him on the return flight, a consignment of vows full of water to be used for future royal christenings. Grace Community Church pastor and theologian John MacArthur has stated that worship held online does not count as genuine church as it goes against the biblical definition of proper worship. In an episode of Grace to You posted online on October 31st, MacArthur was asked his opinion of worship or Bible study held online. Zoom church is not church, responded MacArthur. It's not church. It's watching TV. There's nothing about that that fulfills the biblical definition of coming together. It's Relating one another to love and good works coming together. The definition of a church is crystal clear in the New Testament. We see the picture of it. They came together the first day of the week. They worshipped the Lord. They prayed. It was fellowship and it was the breaking of bread in the Lord's Supper. Mark Arthur stated that church involves coming together and that it doesn't even function unless people are mutually using their spiritual gifts for one another. We are only the church when we are together, he continued. The church is the church when it corporately worships, when it corporately prays, when it corporately hears preaching of the word of God. Movie of the week, I can only imagine. Dennis Quaid and Trace Atkins star in this inspiring true story behind Mercy Me's beloved hit song, running from a troubled home life and a broken relationship. 
Bart Millard found escape in music. Hitting the road in a decrypt tour bus, Bart and his band, Mercy Me, set out on an amazing journey none of them could ever have imagined. In this uplifting music-filled movie that beautifully illustrates the power of forgiveness and God's love. This is Christian Connect. Let's now check on our fact file and look at what we have for you. That was very, very interesting. And you are still watching Christian Connect, the part two of understanding the role of spiritual fathers. And my guests are Apostle Curtis uh, Amate Few, and he is the general overseer of the Riches of Glory Ministries. And I also have uh, brother Mark J.B. Nyante, and he is an elder with the brethren at Nyantre Nyase. Now, um, uh, uh, Mark, brother Mark, um, can someone have more than one spiritual father? Brother Paul, let me have a bite at uh, what Apostle just said. Mm. It's very important. Uh, before mm. we went for the break. Yes. Mm. Yes, okay. Um, First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, As every man has received the gifts, mm. even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Mm. He touched on something very important. And to me, because we missed that, the problem keeps on mm. Um, growing. growing and maybe it started with those who brought Bible schools to us the first time they trained only pastors no matter your gift once you entered there you came out as a pastor, as a pastor. he may have a different gift mm. I know some personally some were administrated gifted administrators but they were forced into the pastorate mm. and they caused a mess some are gifted evangelists they came up uh, uh, out as pastors no matter i think it even persists to today maybe there are some variations here and there so like he said the people are uh, under you by all means we will come under some people somebody even if it is one mm. but then those who have come under you Ephesians once again is saying there are several. Look around you, look through them, those that have been gifted differently mm. than yours. Mm. Help them come up so mm. that together we train those under us. Because you cannot make an evangelist a pastor. You cause a mess. And so if we, we, we stick to that pattern given to us by God, we will begin to be solving the problems that have come up all this while. And we will not have only trained uh, 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 pastors, we mm. have trained evangelists, trained this, prophets. trained that, prophets. And then they will see the pattern of the church and mm. then the pattern of the work. In fact, there is a church and then there is a work. The church has elders, the work has apostles at leaders, planting churches and then putting the, pro the, uh, the Timothys and then the, Timot uh, the Titus's in charge of these local churches. Was he a pastor or was a prophet? Or he was, was acting in place of an apostle. Oh, okay. But now everything has been reduced to being a pastor. And then the pastor has taken it all over. Once mm. again, uh, some time back I read this uh, 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 write-up where some pastors were complaining that they have so much on them and the work is killing them. And I replied, it is your own doing. The work is not supposed to be carried out about by you alone. Jesus had all the gifts. None of us have all the gifts. Right. So the Bible says, as each one has received a gift, so uh, uh, pursue it and then work with it. Um, we sh should do, do away with spiritual fathers? No, there will always be yeah, the yes, need be for need. people to help, to yes. teach, to mm -hmm. guide. Exactly. Yes, mm -hmm. but you see, we have talked a bit about that one mm -hmm. and the problems that have emanated from there so now let's focus on the solutions yes so what are the solutions what do you think is the way forward the way forward is what i keep uh, uh, saying there's a constitution for us and there's an order for us 
the local church, where the local church is made up of born again believers, those who have believed on the Lord Jesus as their Lord. If Jesus is not your Lord, he cannot possibly save you. So he says, those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that Christ has raised them from the dead, he will save them. These, when they come together, or even when they have not come together, they form the church. So that we're not going to have people, uh, like Pastor said, you have the anointing and still you are stealing. You have the anointing and still you are doing stuff around. No. But then it is a place for those who have become born again. And once you become born again, everything does not stop there. No. You still have your own nature that we need to be taught and groomed out of. And surely you have some elders whom we can say spiritual fathers to help you. So let's go to the basis. Secondly, let's reduce the, 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 the trust that we have in pastors to the extent that as if they are the called, the only ones called. We have other giftings. Let's the other giftings also come into play so that they help all the pastors and the prophets and the evangelists together to groom up these people. Mm. Which the Bible says, we equip them for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, so that we come to a perfect standing. In fact, the, the Ephesians chapter 4 renders it beautifully unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And there is a qualification for those who are elders in the church. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 5 says that he was also an elder, advising other elders. Look at the stature of Peter. And he says he's an elder. Aside being an apostle, he was an elder in the church at Jerusalem. With James and John, according to Galatians chapter 2. So we have moved from the order. Let's come back to the, the formula, the order, and then things will begin to go right for us. Right. Thank you so much. Um, that was uh, Brother Mark uh, J.B. Nyante. Of the, he's an elder with the Brethren at Nyantre, Niyase, mm -hmm. uh, India, Shanti region. So, Apostle, our time is almost uh, fast spent and we'll have to uh, bring it to an end. So, what would you say is just uh, concluded that we should, um, for example, I mean, whether you are an elder, Apostle, pastor, or prophet, or whoever, definitely there will be people under you that you will mentor, uh, whether it's spiritual uh, mentorship or spiritual fatherhood or whatever it is. Um, what would you say finally um, to people or to uh, people who are sons and people who are fathers? Yeah, like Paul, like I said earlier on, what I would say finally is that the problem arises from the mentorship, the the, the upbringing, the, up, the upbringing of the of the sons. Mm. That's what the problem is, mm -hmm. because like you said, if I'm a pastor, and I see a young guy has a pastoral calling, it's easier for me to raise him up and groom him in whatever way. Assuming he's a prophet, I'm a pastor. I have, I, I have nothing. To, I mean, about prophetic. I have nothing. To, to do the prophetic. I don't mm. even know much about it. In attempting to raise that son as a prophet or as a pastor, if that is what the problem is. And the sons, as he start growing up and begin to understand things, then the relationship between you and him also started dividing and yes. going each way because he's not getting what he, mm. he is supposed to yes. get yes. from you. You understand me? Mm. Pastor, so, we, so we the leaders should Mm. appreciate the giftings that God has brought to us mm. and identify each person and his calling mm. and how God wants us to train them mm. so that our sons will grow up and will not forget us. Amen. Also, the emphasis is spiritual growth, mm. spiritual training. Mm -hmm. These days, it become more of the flesh. I want him to do this for me or do that for me. If he doesn't do that for Come me, and then cook for me. Uh, if he doesn't stuff. cook for me, then you are. <laughs> the emphasis is spiritual. You are grooming. You are a spiritual father like because that. you want to impart spirituality into him like and that. discipline him. But where the flesh has taken over, if he doesn't so tie to me, if he doesn't mm -hmm. so this to me, then he has a problem. Oh, but if you're a father, uh, you are, you are I son, agree. you give to. He will give to you. So, but yeah. all depends on what you have mm. given back to that son. Right. And it is a time will come that the son remember the effort you have put into his or her life, mm. and then he will come back and give to you even more than you have expected. 
wow. you understand me? My, my, some of my bishop, senior bishop's friends come to me and it's like, they want to reap for what they have not sown. <laughs> and I'm like, when I was growing up in ministry, what did you do for me? You did mm. nothing. Uh, uh, so, well, so, so, so now you are coming to demand mm. for me. I find it difficult. But like I said, if you help me while I'm still young, like I'm going with my son around here, whatever I have to do to make him grow up in ministry, and I'm able to do that, he will grow up and become even more powerful than me, 10 times more than me. And he will still submit to me because he's going to live based on the relationship we've had when he was growing up. Mm. It must be spiritual. It there must are be too spiritual. much flesh in this thing. It must be spiritual. And, and we must cut off the flesh and train our sons spiritual and let leave the rest to God. And for the physical, they have ability to think about their physical mm -hmm. means and how to make things. But the spiritual is where we are giving them directions mm. and equipping them. So you, you said something that I want a quick clarification. You talked about the fact that somebody is, um, as a, an apostle. You, for example, you are an apostle, mm. and you don't know much about, say, um, prophecy. Mm. And if if you realize that this person is kind of uh, into the prophetic ministry, mm. w what do you do? Do you give it to somebody who is well versed in that area, or you maintain that person as a son? That's what I'm saying. So if my if my one of my sons is a prophet and I'm not good in those areas, mm -hmm. I must find a way and means to find somebody that can help him grow up in that prophetic area, All right. so that I would not submit him into my way of doing things and my understanding of pastorship, which he is not part of that kind of calling. Mm -hmm. And that is where the son begins to break away from because he has a gift. He want to prophesy. He want to see things, and he has a pastor who is telling him. You can't do that. Here, mm. we don't do that here. You, have to, you are too small to do this. And then eventually, as he starts looking around, finding anybody who can help, then the relationship between you and him starts breaking down. And all of a sudden, you don't see his loyalty and commitment to you. And then you start, oh, my son is no more. But the, the, the equipping and the training mm. and, the, and, and, the, and the spirituality which he has to grow from you or to receive from you, he's not getting it. I pray that we pastors must understand that God is just giving us the grace. And God can give us the grace to mm. raise anybody mm. once God brings that person to us. Mm. And we must also understand that God has seasons and times that we will take them away from us and use them somewhere else. Wow. And that wow. is where <laughs> Ephesians 4 comes into <laughs> play. He is right. giving different giftings to help different brethren mm. to come up. Not one person to raise several. Right. Oh. Right. Thank you so much. It's been <laughs> very, very exciting. Uh, two weeks uh, dealing with the issue of spiritual fathers and their role in our lives. And uh, my guests have been <laughs> Brother um, uh, Mark J.B. Um, Nyante. Of, uh, he's an elder with the Brethren at Nyantre Nyase at Kwadaso in the Ashanti region, of course. And then um, my own uh, apostle here, Apostle uh, Curtis Amate Fiu, and he is the general overseer of the Riches of Glory uh, Ministry. Thank you both so much for uh, coming and for helping us understand this issue. Now let's take the answer to our Bible quiz and we'll be back to conclude. And that's it for Christian Connect. My name is Paul and Mark Hody. And God bless you so much for watching. I believe that you have been blessed. And it is also on Facebook. So you can always go back and watch it again. God bless you so much for being part of the show.